Hi, this is Terry Brock, and I got a special message that I want to send to you right now that's a little different than what I normally do. Don't have all the graphics and the B-roll and those things going, but it's an important message that hit me yesterday, and it has ramifications for life for you as an agorapreneur, the entrepreneur who believes in a live and let live lifestyle, as well as for business. It really relates, and it based on what happened uh, in the news. You might be familiar with some of the events that have happened, and uh, let me just move this over here a little bit here. Matter of fact, I'm looking out right now over a nice lake as it's calming down. I love this time of day. Uh, as it starts to wind down, we start to get a different uh, mood as we head toward the evening. But I'm um, thinking about what happened. We got news just the other day, and you probably saw it in the news as well, that uh, the actor uh, Ed Asner passed away at 91 years old. He played Lou Grant famously on that Mary Tyler Moore uh, series at, that I remember as a kid going to school. Uh, growing up, we'd see that and it was a, kind of a fun thing. Got the chance to know him, to love him, and sometimes be irritated with the character of Lou Grant. But uh, I think he did an outstanding job with it. The reason I mention that is because it, I had a chance to meet Ed Asner a few years ago. I haven't told many people this, but uh, it was a wonderful experience and spent some extensive time with him. And it was great. I was MC for a big event up in Aspen, Colorado that John Hazel had put together. John, if you're watching this, thank you for lining that up. And I was uh, a big shot in a very small group, okay? But there were some important people there. Like Lou uh, was there. We also saw Ron Paul was there. Dennis Kucinich, former representative from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, Jesse Ventura, uh, Andrew Napolitano, uh, several people, Roger Veer, a lot of people. It was a crypto conference. I was the MC, so I got a chance to see a lot of people. <clears throat> but the scene was that we got together. Uh, it was breakfast. They had a breakfast over here in another location, a little farther away from the main uh, gathering, for the speakers. And so the speakers would get there, get to know each other. And I enjoyed it as the MC, getting a chance to talk with a lot of people and uh, talk with them about their ideas, who they are, what they've done, those kind of things. And getting a chance to talk with Judge Andrew Napolitano for it's, it's about uh, the Third Amendment and we're, uh, I said that's the one amendment that has not been violated yet and he goes well actually Terry it was and he cited a case where uh, I think it was Nelson Rockefeller uh, did something that did that but uh, I thought it was fun and then uh, Ron Paul and Dennis Kucinich who were sitting down at a table and just started talking to the two of them about their views on many different things even though they were Republican and Democrat when they both served in the House getting their perspective by the way they're very good friends and I can see why, because we have a lot in common. Well, as I finished that conversation with them, I got up and walked over, and there was Ed Asner sitting at a table, and it looked like he was alone. I walked over, and I introduced myself, tell him I was the MC, and glad to have me. I joined him, and he was so kind to say, oh, yes, please join me. And so we talked, and I told him what I was doing, and, and told him I'd heard of... Uh, I think I'd heard of him, but I knew a guy named Lou Grant once. Have you ever met him? He lived up in Minneapolis. He goes, I think I've heard of him. So <laughs> we had a great time. But the reason I mention this is because this has been ramifications for you in business and in life. We talked about a number of different to topics that are passionate for both of us. And I found many areas where we agreed. I mean, we were lockstep together. There were some other areas where we didn't agree. We didn't see things the same way. And that was okay because we both respected each other. Even though we just met, didn't know each other. I knew him and through his character and his television stuff and he had never heard of me and I'm not surprised. <laughs> but uh, uh, it was just really good to talk. And we had so many good times. I remember we got at one point and I asked him, I said, okay, I gotta find out from you your favorite president. Well, he snapped back real quickly. <laughs> he didn't have to hesitate at all. He knew exactly Franklin Delano Roosevelt. I said, I kind of thought it would be that. Uh, he said, well, what about you? I said, well, I'm probably more Thomas Jefferson or a Grover Cleveland kind of guy. And we just smiled and chuckled and talked. And then when we got ready to uh, leave and we we're going to go back, they had a special golf cart for him and a couple of his assistants. And he hollered over at me and said, Terry, would you join me in the, in the cart and get a ride back? And I thought, what? because yeah, it was about a, maybe a 200 yard walk and so they provided that little golf cart for him that he could go back and I got a chance to be there with him and uh, ch chat just a little bit more and thank him profusely for a wonderful time. I saw him a couple more times at the event and then never again. Uh, but my point is find those people who are wonderful out there. There are many of them. In today's world too often we gravitate to this camp versus that camp and I find that really hurtful. I find that painful that we are denying ourselves good. What we need to do 
stretch across and understand other people who believe 180 off from you on different topics. Find those areas where you agree. There's probably going to be some. And accentuate those. Build on top of those. And when you have sincere disagreement, rather than arguing and name calling and all the filthy, excuse my language, filthy stuff that's being done today with each other, let's try to find areas of commonality and be curious. Be more curious as to what people believe and why they believe that. Not in an argumentative way, but in trying to find out, hmm, okay, that's an interesting perspective. What leads you to believe that? Not in an accusative way, not, well, why do you think that? But rather, well, tell me more about that. I know, I don't know about you, but I know about me. I have changed my mind on a lot of very important subjects throughout my life. Things that I used to believe real fervently at one time, now not that big a deal. And, or I might believe the exact opposite. And so I find it's good to be open. Ed Asner, I'm going to miss you. I got a chance to know you that one time. You made me smile. You made me think as Lou Grant. And you've done many other wonderful things in your life. So thank you for what you've done. Another thing that happened yesterday is we had a uh, memorial service, a celebration of life, I should say, celebration of life for a dear friend of mine and many people in the National Speakers Association, Jeannie Robertson. Jeannie is an icon. She is a past president and member of the Speaker Hall of Fame, member of the Cavett Committee, and just an outstanding human being, a certified speaking professional. She had several million, literally millions of followers and people watching her videos on YouTube. Jeannie Robertson, she was a humorous, former Miss North Carolina. She lived a wonderful life, a long life. We lost her husband, Jerry, who she would call left brain, uh, just a couple of months ago. And so now, uh, if you'll indulge me a minute, I'm gonna pretend that the two of them are together again up there. But Jeannie was a woman who was kind, she was giving, she helped so many. We're gonna miss her a lot. And I wanna thank Jeannie if you're watching this somewhere, somehow. And anyway, thank you. You made my life better and that of many others as well. My point is, life is short. We need to get along with people, like with Ed Asner. You meet someone like that, don't jump immediately to the places where you disagree. Or try to really work actively to find areas where you agree. And when you find someone like a Jeannie Robertson, who is so kind, so wise, incredibly brilliant, I heard her make comments both in our CPAE, the Speaker Hall of Fame meetings that we would have that are just amazing, and then in our private Cavett meetings that we've had. I've had uh, the, my very first one when I was there and listened to her as they were talking about a subject that was very sensitive. She said something that would make us chuckle a little bit and then would make us think very profoundly and deeply. Be that kind of a person. Aim for those qualities in your own life, in your business and in your personal life, and I think you'll enjoy life much more. I want to hear from you. Leave a note below. Let me know wherever you're getting this. Let me know what your thoughts are on that, and I will look forward to hearing from you. Hey, thanks a bunch for taking some time to be with me today.